are the lineup for today's goal and the big seventh day. And we need to say it a hundred ways, and I'm not going to say that because there's no tomorrow. Rightfield said it best. Sit down before the game, said, isn't this something? You play 162 games in a regular season, you play 36 in spring training, you play six up in the World Series, and it's all wrapped up in the nine innings that we play today. That's it. End of story. The winner's the champ. Well, the loser, he just goes home, and he waits for the World Series losing chair, which is not too hard to take, which will come around six times. There'll be about a three or four thousand dollars difference between winner and loser. Right now, the bullpen crew for the Dodgers is heading out, and it's led by John Drysdale, pick number 53. For the Los Angeles Dodgers, it'll be Maury Wills to lead off, playing shortstop. Wills shortstop. That is that it will be the third baseman, Jim Gilliam. Gilliam at third base. Batting third, center fielder Willie Davis. Davis in center field. In the cleanup spot, Lou Johnson in left field. Johnson. Batting fifth, Ron Ferry. Ferry will be in right field. Batting sixth, it will be the first baseman, Wes Parker. Parker at first base. Batting seventh, the second baseman, Dick Krzyzewski. Krzyzewski to second base. Batting eighth, John Roseboro, the catcher. Roseboro, the catcher. And batting ninth, Jordan Baker, Sandy Colfax. Colfax, batting ninth. For the Minnesota Twins, leading off will be the shortstop, Sonia Versailles. Versailles is shortstop. Batting second, the center fielder, Joe Nostek. Nostek in center field. Batting third, the right fielder, Oliva. Tony Oliva in right field. In the cleanup spot, third baseman, Killebrew. Harmon Killebrew at third base. Batting fifth, the catcher, Earl Patton. Batting the catcher. Batting sixth, left fielder, Bob Allison. Allison in left field. Batting seventh, Don Mincher at first base. Mincher. Batting eighth is Quillacy. At second base, Quillacy. And the pitcher is Jim Cox. Out against Colfax. The umpire for today's game. It'll be Ed Hurley at the American League behind the plate. It'll be Tony Benzon of the National League at first base. John Flaherty of the American League at second base. Ed Sudol of the National League at third base. Down the line to left field. Bob Stewart of the American League. And Ed Barco of the National League. This is it. The seventh game of the 1965 World Series. And it'll be Colfax to start and Jim Cox. It was interesting to listen to the, the way that the Sandy Kofax came to find out that he was a pitcher in the clubhouse without much ceremony, wore off and walked over, put the ball in his locker, and that's the way they tell you. And now, ready to bring the play-by-play from the Philadelphia Phillies, Barry Spire Town. All right, you all, thank you very much, and hello, everybody. Moving to Minnesota, right down to the last game of the World Series. And of course, Scott and Kovac have not been strangers. They've battled each other here and in Los Angeles. The first time around, Cox came off the victor. And the last time they met in Los Angeles, it was Kovac winning. Joe pointed out to the legend of Kovac. And there have been reams of stories written about it. And Colfax and Drysdale, of course, taking it uh, just like you would expect them. They're great sportsmen. They haven't just a turn all year. Either one, I guess, would be a good selection. And it will cause some mention. He said, you writers have the second guess. Maybe they'll beat Colfax, and you'll say, maybe I'd get a shot at Drysdale. But he says, I only have one choice. The big husky lefty cock. So much is riding with them. He was an 18 game winner over the years. He pitched a brilliant game here in Dean Colfax. And then was knocked out in the third inning at California. There's another packed house. The temperature reading here in Minnesota is 60 degrees. The wind is out of the northwest at 9 miles an hour, blowing to left. Uh, if anything, the ball is riding well to left field. He's been placed on Larry Will. He has hit lately in every game in the series, and by far is the best hitter. That is 423. And as you would expect, that infield has punched and moved in on Will. He'll be up right handed now, and here is Cotting with delivery. The first pitch is blowing by for a ball one. And your World Series game is underway. We had rain, lightning, and thunder here around 7.30 this morning, but all in all, the sun is out, and it's a real lovely day for baseball. Will, William, and Willie Davis to start it off in the top half of the first inning. The 30 left-handed cut, set to go, sends and delivers, and it's low inside, ball two. He is strong, his cut. This 
Sadie Bender, great confidence in himself, and a next one fielder, holds the runners on well. And I think another point that Austin made, he's also a good hitter. He looks like a back today. Here's the fight. Another one. Wells is almost unpredictable as a place. He can punch, he can hit the ball through the hole, he can bounce that ball through the infield. He swings and fouls this one off on the first base side. He do. He do a part of this World Series. Actually, the games have not been close at all. One team or the other gets in the lead and just goes on to win it. Minnesota, the Twins, and the Brewers. Thank you. 
running a 292 and up against top four, Lefty's Randy Topa. Randy 3-2 in World Series competition, 1-1 one one here in the 1965 series.
something else. He's just one of the fine-looking young hitters in baseball. And he's still quite a young man. Looks like he's going to be a star for many years to come. But Bob, going back, going to And he is calling for that fine car. Thank you. 
with no sack. He figured if he brings Drysdale in, if there comes a time when he would be possibly a pinch hitter, he could still leave John in because he's one of his better hitters. And then he could still rejoice the more left handed pitching by way of Aronofsky. Or if he had to go to Miller, a right handed. So there's been a lot of thinking and planning for this final game. Here comes Earl Batty to bat. Thank you. 
54 on the series. He has two hits and 13 hits for the plate. And actually, uh, had it not been for an injury to LaFever, he probably would be riding the bench. LaFever is still hopping around and not able to play. Thank you. 
used to call the drop, and it really breaks off. The pitch. Back to 
Austin. Right into Austin right now. And it's going to be a foul. Got it out like it might be a successful one attempt. It'll go down as a strike. Rose Murray and Kovacs will pull it. Well, generally, if you're about as fine a putter as you'll find in the game of baseball. He has practiced on this. And as you know, when he was a minor leaguer, he was quickly a right-handed batter.
cut, delivers a pop-up. It's just at the plate. Matty turns. Matty is off on the foul side. He's got it. Uh, after uh, tipping the bat, uh, then 
and nothing would get the first base or if it could hit a bit with the throw and the uh, size has to go back and that's it. Right now, Amelia uh, and Ed Elliott is catching it along with Nathan who is just listening. It could be an obstruction more than an interference. Nothing, apparently that's what happened. It appeared on the throw and so it's really a, a double penalty in a way and if it's size has to go back and Nathan is out. That's a call you don't see very, very often in baseball. I heard he was right on it. First in the action of Versailles going, Nafik's going on the pitch. Uh, we, had, we couldn't follow that, actually, behind the plate, so Nafik is out. Versailles has to return, and a leader is coming to bat. Still no score in the home half of the third inning. Today from the Twin Cities, Minneapolis and St. Paul, Game 7 of the World Series. Kovacs uh, go again goes to first place. And there's a sort of a quick pull uh, by Kovacs again to first base, for Ty getting back. And while this is going on, the attention focus to first base, will leave it back down. I'll leave I got a walk in the first.
That ball gets right at the face of the wall where it says 330. And there goes the hurry up call to the bullpen. Still nobody out. Dodgers batting here in the fourth inning.
Rocky winning, and also he had a throwing error. Johnny Roseboro. He is certainly one of the unsung heroes, the Dr. Paul Club, when you think of it, and the stars of the team, you think so much of the two great pitchers and Wills. Well, here's one of the hardest working catchers in the baseball business. He takes one low, a ball. He doubles in the right field, and his other trip to the plate. This is the visiting point, and the Dodgers lead. Only the second time they've ever had the lead in four games that they played here in Minnesota, the World Series. Ah, now sorry, the ball. Right, they get him an early lead, but that was gone in a hurry. Audrey takes his lead. Here's the pitch, low inside, the ball. Three and all. Another packed house. It'll be close to 50,000 today. The two teams, all even three apiece. The pitch. Oh, he wants it.
three-pointer. He breaks probably more fast than anybody else on the Dodgers ball club. There's a pop foul. Killebrew coming off the line. He's in front of the Dodger dugout. He wraps it up. Two down. Two up, two down. And here's the young man who gets the Dodgers started for the home run. Joe pointed out he's going back to Kentucky after the series. Two to nothing the score. 
Now into his second base. After Minter popped up, Coolidge is double left center. Hold back. After the foul delivers to Rollins. It's a strike, a fat ball. Two balls in one strike.
this is Sam Mealy. Jim Cox started. Alan Worthington came on. And now Johnny Cliftine. Parker batting left-handed. Philippe moves in. Looking for a possible bunt. Cliftine delivers the first pitch. It's high ball one. The infield is pulled around Versailles and shortstop over near the back, really playing as part of the polo ball. There's a lot of room between Versailles and Philip Rowe. The 1 0 pitch by Cliftine. Put it in the air, but foul. Out of play, if that is, it's not ever chance. So it's one ball, one strike with one out. And Hurley just off the plate. John Cliftine rubs up the ball. Out. West Park is a hitter, one out, nobody on, two to nothing, Dodgers lead in the six. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch, curveball is well on, it's used to center field, now that they're going back, 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 that ball is off the center field fence, at the base, Parker, round second base, he's sitting for third, here comes the throw in and Parker has a trip ball. West Parker has just tripled off the center field fence. Some 430 feet from home play. Joe Nassik, at the crack of the bat, was off and running. And he had a lot of territory to cover. It was off the fence and Parker had the triple. And the hitter, Suzuki, the infield now, with one out, has to come in. Dodgers lead, two to nothing. In the Minnesota bullpen, Jim Perry begins to loosen up. Suzuki right-hand batter, clip time, delivered. It's a strike, a fastball. Suzuki, of course, can handle the bat. Wins constantly watching Preston go manage. They have to worry about a squeeze. What out? Have to come in. Dodgers lead, two to nothing. In the Minnesota bullpen, Jim Perry begins to loosen up. Suzuki right-hand batter, clip time, delivered. It's a strike, a fastball. Suzuki, of course, can handle a bat. Twins constantly watching Fletcher Gomez. They have to worry about a squeeze play here. Parker at third base. Two to nothing to score. Dodgers lead. Flip time. Get the time. Lead by Parker. Here's the squeeze. It's running foul. They put it on. Run it foul. Here's the squeeze. It's Parker broke perfectly. He waited until clip time and delivered the ball. Suzuki fouled it off. So it's two strikes on Suzuki, who looks at uh, Franklin Gomez once again. Can't take for granted they won't put it on again, even though there are two strikes. Clip time. Get the time. Deliver two strikes to Suzuki. Outside. Ball one. One ball, two strikes. Hey, you try to take Suzuki fast, you feel like you slumped. Suzuki, the hitter, Parker, at third base, flip time, delivers once again. It's low ball two, two balls and two strikes. Just missed the strike zone. Flip time, trying to thread the needle. Left-hander Jim Merritt has joined Jim Perry in the Minnesota Twins bullpen. Sixth inning. Two to nothing. Dodgers lead. West Park to third base. Here's the 2 2 pitch. High and it's ball three. Six for Duke at the count of three balls, two strikes. One man out. West Park at third base. Clip time. Delivered. Squeeze is put on his ball. Jump out. Roseboro's anxious to hit, but they're way out there. Three ball, 
Most right. Here comes ball four. So Roosevelt drives the base on balls and brings up Colfax. Colfax walked in the third inning and bounced out the fourth. Sandy had a big place in Los Angeles. He's not known for his hitting. But you remember that old play you used to holler on the playground when you swing your dangerous and go back to swing. Now West Park is the third, Roseboro is the first, but pretty good speed. Good sign at the belt, here's the pitch. Swung on his left strike one. He had a big cut at a high fat ball.
the wild pitches, the three and two pitches are the ones that have the infielders back on their heels. Although Wills made a point the other day about playing behind Kofak. Here's the two-two pitch first. All back. Now remains a two and two. He says that sometimes you find yourself relaxing too much because Kofak strikes out so many of the hitters that you think he's going to strike out every hitter that walks up there. If you're not careful, you're back on your heels. Watch as Kofak strike out the hitter like everybody else. Two balls, two strikes. Only for wins. And Kofak delivers. High. All three. With the two Tony all get on his tip toes. A little pressure on his two strings that time. Oliva, a real cut and flash hitter, doesn't really have a strike zone. His strike zone is any place that he can reach with the bat. A very aggressive hitter. He's led the American League twice to hit him. Here's the 3 2 pitch. Come on, and this he struck him out. A seven strikeout for a pullback. And here is Harvard Killebrew. Killebrew walked in the first inning. He tapped right back to pull back to the fourth. Shoot it up at the score. Dodgers lead. One man out, nobody on. It's the bottom of the sixth inning. Seventh game of the World Series. Here today, Kofax the curveball is stayed high at ball one. Kofax gets hit. That's the kind of a high curveball that really gets you in trouble. One old pick. Come on. High fly ball. Down the left field line. Will give it a chase. Johnson gives it a chase. And Johnson makes the play. Nice play by Johnson, who had to actually run around the left field umpire, who was Bob Stewart. Stewart tried to find a way to get out of the way of the on-rushing killing of the third base and Wills, and had to worry about Johnson hitting him from the other side. Who so got two outs and he was batting. First inning, fly to center field in the fourth. Here's the pitch. One on, line drive to Rory Wills. Right on the nose, but right at him. And Batty is out. And it's a one, two, three inning for the Minnesota Twins here. And so the score at the end of six innings, it's the Los Angeles Dodgers two, the Minnesota Twins nothing. <laughs> against the Marlon Killebrew way in the third base. Don Mitchell way in his first base. Outfield is moved in as Johnny Clipstein gets the sign and delivers the first pick. Who takes it outside, cutting up the good department. Once again, the action really goes. Willis is right to the first. Mitchell and Killebrew break in. One ball, no strike. Will wait. Clipstein delivers. One on a bounce ball for Tidy Swift left a big hop. He's got it to throw. He's in time. Nice play. Tony <laughs> over Tidy didn't waste any time. Getting far to his left. And once he dropped it, he really shot from the hip. He had to. You can't stop and think with Will's throw. You better get that ball and throw over Tidy. You just that. And they were able to get Maury Wills for the first down. And here is Jim Gilliam. Gilliam has made the defensive play so far in this ball game. He's one for three. He's single in the first setting. Takes the strike, a fat ball over the outside corner. And then just inning with two men off, Gilliam made a backhanded play to Rob Versailles. Low. That's right, one ball, one strike. Rod Paranofsky. Only for the Dodgers. One ball, one strike. Dodgers two, twins nothing. Top of the seventh inning. Flip time. Who delivers a one-one pitch? Track ball outside, and it's two balls and one strike. Drive Dale and Paranowski for the Dodgers. In the bullpen, Kofax, the Dodgers lead 2 to nothing in the seventh. 2 1 by Chris Stein. Gilliam, a hot smash in the right field at the base hit. Up with the ball is Oliva as Gilliam makes the turn at first. He's on with a single. And there is Willie Davis. Davis 
of his sacrifice in the first grade, followed out to the tractor in the third, followed out to Killebrew in the fifth. One man out. Killebrew moved in close. Davis, of course, with great speed. Lime would do anything in the batter's box. Good speed, good power. Tremendous speed. Billy Malay, here's the pitch. Swung on. A high fly ball down the left field line. Foul territory. Everybody's busy. The chase and nobody can get it. It drops for a strike. William heads back to first. And Davis, who was well around the back. Davis' speed has been described many, many ways. But I guess Al Campana, the scout for the Dodgers, described it best when he said that Davis has a kind of speed that he can stretch a stand up double into a slide in triple. The guy can really move. Willoughby comes on in to talk to Clipstein now. There's one man out. Willoughby well, wants to make sure that Clipstein has a set in his mind. Who's covering? It's a basic play, but it's a constant reminder that infielders have to give pitches. Sometimes in concentrating on a hitter, they'll forget. Davis waiting. Clipstein ready. Gilliam leads off first. Here's the pitch. Swung on a foul ball down the left field line. Out of play. So it's strike two on Willie Davis. The on that hitter is Lou Johnson. He hit a home run in the fourth inning. He was the leadoff man. Dodgers picked up another run on a double by Fairley and a single by Parker. That's been all the story. Two runs on seven hits. Twins no runs. They've only made two hits. One out here in the seventh. Billy will lead his first, and here's the pitch to Davis. But he's playing nose this early. Cut breaking curveball, and it's one ball, two strikes. Cliff Stein trying to keep the ball down to get the ground ball. Mincher holds Gilliam close at first base. Willie Davis waiting. Cliff Stein once again at the belt. Sets the lead by Gilliam, and here's the pitch. It is hit Willie Davis this year. The curveball hit him on the back foot. And so Willie Davis is on his first base. Gilliam moves on down to second base, and here is Lou Johnson. Flip side with an overhand curveball, trying to get the ground ball. It's just missed Willie Davis. So we have base runners at first and second. One out, and Johnson the hitter. And Johnson doesn't waste much time. He gets up there, the first pitch is thrown, and he likes, he's cutting. He has one home run in this game, one hit, hit the ball well every time. Here he hits the first pitch foul. Now the first base line, Minter gives it a chase, it's out of play. His first time up, Oliva made a fine running catch. He saved the run. Second time up, Johnson hit a home run. But his only hit. And then in the fifth, he drilled one to the right center, but Oliva once again made a fine play, this time a one-handed grab. Johnson right-handed batter, strike one to count, two to nothing, the Dodgers lead. Seventh inning, Gilliam at second, Willie Davis at first. Cliff nine delivers. Swung on, a bouncy ball, Killebrew at third base, the big hop, his only play is the first, the throw is in time. With Gilliam moving on down to third base, Willie Davis, He's going in the second base. Good guard, two out. Base runners in second and third. Ron Fairley, fair With West Parker on deck. And now, Fatty, we want to talk to Cliff Stein. It really comes out of the checkout. Good picture of six situations here with Fairley, who's been a hot hitter. It could be this manager merely will want to make a move. He's got a right hand and a left hand to warm it up. There's the left hand that's been warming up. On the scoreboard, two runs, seven hits, and no errors for the Dodgers. No runs, two hits, and one error for the Minnesota Twins. The situation right here, Gilliam is at third, Willie Davis is at second. There are two outs. for the first doctor run and fairly doubled and scored on the base hit by Parker. Jim Merrick is being brought in here, a left-hander, to 
listening to Ron Perry. And this is the fourth interview it's by manager Sam Mealy this afternoon. Yeah, 
Joe Turner, he's going as hard as he can. Here's the one-two pitch. He swings those too early. Sets it in time. So it's two balls, two strikes with one out, nobody on. Two to nothing in the bottom of the seventh. Josh is out in front. Colfax is constantly removed his cap, wiped his brow. Makes the pick of the rod and back. Yes, this time. Ready. Two-two pitch to Minter. Hold on, a foul to ball. It is a foul ball when Parker came up with it. So the count remains is two balls and two strikes. Oh, Pat. Moves out the mouth. Off with the cap. Two balls, two strikes. Get your way. Two to nothing. Dodgers lead. Bottom of the seventh. Here's the two-two pitch. Swung on and fouled off. Out of play. Count remains is two balls, two strikes. Billy Martin, coaching at third base, out from Curryman, there is Jim Lemon at first base, Al Maradon, the other coach, in the bullpen, Johnny Sane, pitching coach here, and Mary, the bench manager. Here's the 2 2 pitch, swung on and fouled back again, and Mitch is getting his touch. Five 
partner, so there's one out there is Suzuki. Suzuki has been out on track twice and trying to punt, hop one to the pitch. Jim Merrick delivers. Well out, bouncing on the killer brew. He's got it. There's a throw in time to up and two down. Come on, a fly ball down the left field line, foul territory, Lou Johnson, cross. 
passes over, waiting for it, makes the one-handed grab. Nice play by Lou Johnson. Off to it, the umpire, down the line, right there to see the play. Here he is with the right hand, the Johnson made the one-handed grab, and there's one out. Go back as we tie the last seven minutes of the row. Twins have made two hits. For size, who's in the batter's box right now, single in the third, and Pulis is double in the fifth. That's been the whole attack so far. Dodgers lead two to nothing. Kofax takes a look at his defense, and here's the pick. It's a curveball high, ball one. Jim Killingham at third base begins to drive the line. Usually in the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning, he'll see the corner man, the first and third baseman, really drive the line. One on is mid, and it's one ball and one strike. The corner man will not allow a ball to get between the bag and himself. The left is a single. Here's the 1 1 pitch. The guy is trying to punch, punch, and foul. Jim Lemon at first base comes up with it. The guy is trying to get on to get the tying run to the plate. One ball, two strikes, one out. Dodgers, two. Twins, nothing. Bottom of the eighth inning. Sandy Kofax. Left hander gets his tie. Takes off one. Now he's got the one he wants. Here's the one-two pitch. One on, one hit to left field. Johnson is going back, back on the warning track. He's there and makes the catch. Going over side by Mr. Johnson on the warning track in left field, and there are two outs. And here is Joe Nothing. Nothing. Bounce out the first. Without on an interference call in the third. Taking to a fourth play in the fifth.
is the one to pick. Hold on, it missed and go back to Dallas tonight. Mary chucks up his first right down and it brings up Maury Will. Will, out on strike to the first, bounced out in the third, fouled out in the fourth, bounced out to the short down in the seventh. Nice play by Versailles in the seventh. Philip moves in. Minster moves in. It's a two nothing ball game. Dodgers out in front, top of the ninth, one out. Jim Perry gets his side. Will's wait. And here is the pitch. Low is strike. Strike one. A fastball is caught in the outside corner. Perry gets his side. Deliver. Caught it down third base line with foul. Deliver up with it. So it's strike two on Maury Will. Two strikes to count, one out. Nobody on, two to nothing. Dodgers lead. A home run by Lou Johnson in the fourth, a double by Fairley, a single by Parker, and that's been all the story so far this afternoon. They're in their seventh game of the 1965 World Series. The two strike pick by Perry to Will is outside this ball one. One ball, two strikes.
Philip Ruth standing on the back of the first, who went out three and a half years to score. Dodgers win, bottom of the ninth inning. Call back. Look down, catch the sign. That's the bell. Catch the runner delivered. Club on his foul back and strike one. In the bullpen, Drysdale and Paranon. Go back. Comes down the stretch. Bottom of the ninth inning. Two men out. One strike to Town Allison. Two of those first base. Go back. Takes off the sign. At the belt. Delivered. High. And it's ball one. One ball, one strike. Right hand hitter. He had a big home run yesterday. A two run over the game, one catch ran away. Go back. Look down for his sign. Killebrew is first base. Two out. One ball, one strike to count. Allison wins. And here's the one one pitch. It's high. Ball two. Two balls and one strike. Dodgers two. Twins nothing. Bottom of the ninth inning. Two men out. One man on. Two balls and one strike on Bob Allison. Who's the time on the play? Go back. At the belt. Delivered. One on and this is strike two. And Go back. Really turned one loose. It had actually knocked it to one side as he really came following through. Two to nothing. Bottom of the ninth. Two balls, two strikes, the count on Bob Allison. Two out. Harlan Killebrew is first base. Colfax gets his sign. At the belt. Now he's back on. I'll take you to Rod's back. He's turned one to death. At the belt. Delivered two, two to Bob Allison. Four on and this. Allison is out to Colfax. Strikes out number 10 of the Dodgers. The company world champions with Colfax. A three hitter as he steps out of the Minnesota Twins. The final score, two to nothing. The Dodgers, is two to nothing over the Minnesota Twins. And Sam Colfax is being robbed by his teammate as he comes on with a three hit shutout to defeat the Minnesota Twins, two to nothing. Needless to say, this is the dressing room of the world champion Los Angeles Dodgers. And this is the highest on the safety of a top, hoping to bring to you some of the men who brought Los Angeles another championship. In 1959, the Dodgers brought the championship to Los Angeles. In 1963, the Dodgers brought the championship to Los Angeles. And in 1955, they have done it again. But here's the fella who gave the Dodgers the championship standing in Los Angeles when you finished your seven to nothing shutout. You were quoted as saying after the game, I'm still a hundred years old. So today, how do you feel? Uh, this one. Uh, 101. I feel good, but yeah, I know it'll have to stop very well for about four months. It's the only good it feels from up here is that your fastball was really your only pick for quite some time. Yes, it was. I don't know what it was. I didn't have a curveball at all, and I wasn't getting it over. I just saved the fastball and tried to get it. Pretty good spot. So I got the lead. I tried to keep holding the ball if I could. Thank you. You had four no hitters. It's a perfect game. You struck out of 18 years. You have a World Series record of 15 in one year. Where did this one fit in that modern thrill that I just had? I don't know. Any, uh, this has got to be as high as any of this whole year is a thrill. Uh, we were at ball club. Everybody said they were going to pay it. We lost Sally Davis, they thought we were going to finish eight. And we went on to Winnipeg, and uh, everybody did such a great job. Blue uh, Dodge to his home run today. Uh, he came up with something to hurt, did a great job. Carried us to the first 10 days, two weeks he was here. And uh, I think Ben kind of sold it off. Uh, without uh, Lou coming up and doing that great job right then, I think uh, the whole ball club probably would have packed a little bit. Thank you so very much. And now go on back and sit down and relax a little while. Oh, sure, buddy. Glad to go back. The man who hit the home run. We had two home runs in the series. Who is called way out by his teammates. Way out, Lou Johnson. Could have played his band. He could have played his band. Did you know your home run is a foul ball? Well, I think my current band, uh, if you know him all the time, I stayed at home three to see where the ball was going out. I knew he did good enough, but it was just so quick. And I got the first place, so I saw a foul track, and I knew the one that's going back in. You know, you're a living story, but you didn't have played on it. Were there times when you were going to quit? I actually would have picked me up, but I actually would have been my last year. I had a 